Hello, my name's Karen O'Connor, and you're listening to Isn't That Interesting? I was just reading all your information, and you've had such an interesting journey. I'm kind of in the space of, oh, I don't know where to start. Do I start with you? Do I start with what you do? So tell me a bit about what happened and what led you to this point in what you're doing right now. Okay, so to be quite honest with you, 10 years ago, I would not have ever imagined that I would ever be where I am at today. Uh, So really what happened 10 years ago is what has led me to this point in my life. Uh, So 10 years ago, I was about, well, it's about 11 years ago now, about 34 years old. Uh, I had been over morbidly obese for most of my life. And at that point, I was, I would have been over 180 kilos. Now, <clears throat> I didn't ever have a recording of my highest weight. Uh, that was just too scary. Uh, I didn't I didn't want to know because when you don't know it's much easier to lie to yourself basically. So over 180 kilos it it of course it didn't happen overnight. I started putting on weight from about the age of 5 and over my life it just continued to compound and compound and compound. There were um, emotional issues which is why I started to put the weight on in the beginning. Uh, When I was young, a little girl, I had a couple of instances of sexual abuse to different um, people uh, in my in my life around between the ages of it was around the age of seven, eight, seven or eight, Um, and so that caused me to create what I now know was a a suit of armour. It was a protection. It was to make myself as unattractive as possible so that I wasn't put in that position. So that continued by the time I finished high school. By the time I finished primary school, I was about 60 kilos. By the time I finished high school, I was easily 100 kilos. And then I turned 18. I'd been overweight all through my growing up years and I decided that I might quite like a boyfriend. I'd never had a boyfriend up until that point and uh, I, I, I felt it was time but I didn't want to have a relationship or I didn't want to have a boyfriend as an overweight person and the reason for that was because when I looked in the mirror I didn't like what I saw. So I went on a mission and uh, I changed what I ate and I exercised and I lost about 40 kilos, got down to a size 12. Uh, and then I did meet a nice young man and we fell in love. And uh, within 12 months, uh, I was pregnant. We were pregnant with our baby, my daughter, who's now 25. Um, and then the issue was that I hadn't dealt with any of the emotional issues that had caused the weight in the first place. And so when we started to have problems, which we did because I had all of these emotional issues that I'd never dealt with, we were both young, we about 19 when we got together. We, I, I, my daughter was already born by the time I was 21. Uh, she was almost one year old, so I had her when I was 20. And so my weight was like a yo-yo. It was up and it was down, depending on what was going on in the relationship at the time. So then nine years later, we decided to, um, it was the end of that relationship. And I was very hurt. And in that relationship, it, it didn't end well. And I was very, very hurt. And I decided subconsciously, that I didn't want to go through that again. So then the suit of armour, the protection came back in full force and much, much worse than what it had been at any time ever before and I just kept putting on weight until I got to about the age of 34 and I was 
over 180 kilos and in a lot of pain. Medically, I think a lot of the doctors were very, they were actually amazed that I was walking around and not having uh, medical issues. But I knew that it was only a matter of time and if I didn't do something about it, then one day I probably wouldn't wake up in the morning and it was as simple as that. So when you were putting on weight, was it because of what you were eating or was it <clears throat> like, so excuse me, was it like totally not dependent on food or was it a mix of the two? It was a mix. Definitely what I ate, it, there was a lot of emotional eating. There was a lot of comfort eating. Um, that was how that was how I dealt with the unhappiness, really. Um, so yes, food definitely had uh, de- food definitely played a part. There was also a lot of stress. Um, I was I decided to become a foster carer. Always putting myself you know, trying to solve my problems by helping other people (laughs) or maybe not so much solve my problems but um, push my problems aside. Uh, When when you're helping other people, you you put them first and that's what I did for so many years. So there was that. There was also because I was a foster carer and I was a single parent and I I wanted, I didn't want the children to miss out on anything. So, you know, I was, I was lucky enough to have a job that was very flexible. And so I could go to all of the school functions and I could get them to all of the extra, extracurricular activities, the dancing and the horse riding and all of those things. However, that meant that uh, I then had to fit my work around all of those things. And so sometimes I would get maybe three, four hours sleep a night, which is so much stress on the body. And uh, that was also a big part of why I was so overweight. And the reason I asked that, I've got to say, is because you, you actually mentioned a suit of armour. So it's mm-hmm. kind of like the where I was going with it, and you did answer it there, is like it was kind of as much subconscious effort as it was eating effort, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? (laughs) Yeah, so it was definitely subconscious for most of the time. Uh, And so how that played out is that um, there were times when I made a definite effort. I mean, you can't walk around morbidly obese and not know that you have a problem and not know that uh, it would be very, very, very beneficial to everybody around you as well as yourself to do something about that. And I did try many times. Uh, and sometimes I would be successful to a point. I would lose 20, 30 kilos. However, then, because subconsciously I wanted that protection, something would happen and I would self-sabotage and the weight would come back on and and more. So that's how that played out. And eventually I did become aware of what I was doing and I still wasn't able to do anything about it until the need for that suit of armour went away. And that's when I was finally able to shift it. And how did that need disappear? Why why did it finally go away? (sighs) Well... I was, I'm very, I feel very blessed because one day I woke up and I thought maybe I don't want to be alone for the rest of my life. Maybe I might actually like to have a relationship. So I already had all these really big reasons why I wanted to release the weight anyway. You know, I had, uh, my own daughter was 16 at the time and I knew that I wanted to see her go to, you know, finish high school and go to uni and um, get married and have children. I wanted to see all of that. I wanted to be here for all of that. Um, So I had all these really great reasons why. But it wasn't enough until one day I woke up and I thought, you know, one day she's going to be off on her own adventure and it's just going to be me sitting at home on the couch or working if I'm lucky enough to still be here. And um, that didn't seem like much fun to me. And so I realised that once again, 
if I wanted to, uh, if I wanted to have a relationship, if I wanted to have a healthy relationship, I needed to, I needed to work on me, and not not just the physical weight. I mean, certainly that was an issue. Once again, I didn't like what I saw in the mirror when I looked in the mirror. So if I didn't love me, how could anybody else love me? But this time it was deeper. I also knew that I knew I had all this emotional baggage, I guess is if that's what you want to call it, all these emotional issues that I had never dealt with from, you know, from um, what happened to me when I was a child and then uh, the relations, the, the one or two relationships that I had um, before I got to that point. So it wasn't just a physical journey for me. It was a, um, a spiritual, a mental and an emotional journey for me. And that was really what enabled me to make the changes because I did have to make lifestyle changes uh, was that I call it my why not flipping to a why. That was that was the light bulb or that was the key that turned that enabled me to then do what I had to do. I want to go off in two directions here, so I'm <laughs> kind of like, oh, because one of the things that you said before was that when you were overweight and foster caring, you did it out of a, you want to help others and it's a way of hiding from your own stuff that's going on you know and and I can recognize that in myself I mean I've got four kids I've never had anything like you've had but I know that it's much easier to throw myself into doing something making sure all the kids are all right making sure they're fabulous meals doing whatever running around doing blah 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 and then I don't have to think about myself I, I know that's the case so where I wanted to go was first of all, how did you realize that that was the case? That that was what you were doing? Did you realize at the time, or was it later? So not for many many years. I realized I would. It was it was certainly before I became a foster carer. So I knew what was going, and I was a foster carer for seven years. So there was a period of about five years, it would have been at least five years, where I realised what I was doing. However, I still wasn't able to, I still didn't know how to get around it. I knew what I was doing. However, it was just so strong, that need for protection was just so strong that I wasn't able to, I didn't have the strength um, to or the tools and techniques. I didn't know enough to be able to get around it. Uh, however, as I continued on my journey, uh, I was lucky enough to have, um, I did come across a lady who did NLP and hypnotherapy and I did some work with her and also my own self-development work. And that's one thing that I've always been open to doing once I realised that there was such a thing as self-development. Um, when I was young, I certainly didn't know that that was a thing. But as I got older and um, I was always very interested in anything to do with um, the mind and the subconscious, I guess all of those teachings all basically um, and ended up one little unraveling one little bit at a time until I got to the point where uh, I just had that that switch that flicked and I it was full steam ahead then. So you said you realised what you were doing for four or five years. What made you realise? Oh, it's funny actually. Um, I was watching the. It was very early days of The Biggest Loser Show. Um, it was the very first series where they had the American trainers and I actually didn't know what that show was. I'd never intended to watch it. I, When I heard The Biggest Loser, I thought, oh, wow, that's not something I'd want to watch. I actually thought it was a show basically putting people down. <laughs> I didn't know it had anything to do with weight loss. But I must have caught... Either somebody told me about it or I saw an ad on TV or something 
camp and I thought, oh, okay, maybe this is something that might be good for me to watch. And I remember one episode, the uh, female trainer was talking to one of the male contestants and she was she was saying to him, tell me why you continue to self-sabotage. They, they were talking about self-sabotage and uh, she was trying to get to what I call the root cause of the issue, um, which is basically what is the cause of all of our emotional issues. Um, and it always comes back to either one or two things. It's either fear or it's the, the belief that we're not good enough or we're not deserving, um, which is definitely what it was for me. And and it wasn't until she was talking to him about this stuff, and I can't remember exactly what she says, what what came out of that, but just the fact that she was she was drilling him so much about that there was more to it, that there was a reason why he did why he did what he did, and there was a reason why he continued to self sabotage. Um, made me realise because so often there's so much judgment in this world when it comes to people who are overweight. Um, so many times when you struggle with your weight, you're just told, "Oh, it's just so easy. You just need to you just need to stop eating what you're eating, and you just need to exercise, and it's that easy." But it's not that easy because it's you know you know what you do. You might not know all the steps, but you at least know one or two things that you could change that is going to get you a result in the direction you want to go. And if you're not doing that, then there's a reason for it. And it's not because you're lazy and it's not because you're not motivated. There's an emotional reason for it. And so often people just... They just believe what they're told and um, and they don't do that work that they need to do. That actually makes so much sense because I'm sad to say that I can be one of those judgmental people. <laughs> really sorry. Because, um, partly because I've never experienced that problem myself. So I don't, my self-sabotage comes out in different ways. Um, yeah. But so when you started the when you at that point when you went oh yeah this is I need to do this now it's changed from a why not to a why what made that difference how did you get to that what was the actual like ding realization (laughs) and then what did you do to take those first steps because those because you got to build momentum in this kind of thing Mm. and and it's never easy and the the First few steps are really, really difficult. How did you, what did you personally use to, to start that process off? Yeah, so, so the thing that, that did it was just basically waking up one morning and realising that I, I, I didn't want to be alone anymore. Um, so that fear was gone. It comes back to the, one of two things, either fear or not feeling enough. And so for me it was fear. It was actually both, but the biggest thing was the fear. So that went away. So that was what got the ball rolling. Now, I will say that the first year I made a decision. Um, Basically, it was uh, New Year's Day and I said, okay, that's it. I'm finally, this time I'm doing it. Um, And I actually started out with Weight Watchers because that was something that I had used in the past and it had worked well for me um, until I got to the point where I (laughs) self-sabotage. But I knew this time I wasn't going to do that. However, I I did do that for a whole year and I got to the end of that first year and I'd, I'd released 10 kilos, which I didn't beat myself up about that because at the end of the day, I still was 10 kilos lighter at the end of the year than how I had started at the beginning. However, I potentially had, I knew that I had at least probably 100 kilos to lose and I was already 34, 35 by that point and I was like, wow, I'm going to be mid-40s before I even get to the end of this journey if I keep going at that rate. So I decided that the next year I needed to, I needed to step it up. So I, I basically did 
the only thing I knew that worked, and it's certainly not anything that I suggest to anybody to do because um, I've learnt lots of better ways since when it comes to eating. But I decided that I was going to try 1,200. I'd heard all of these things about 1,200 calories a week, a day, and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to try that. And the first week that I did that, I first of all, I just wanted to kill everybody. <laughs> I felt sorry, sorry for anybody that was around me because it, it made it quite, it was it was so clear to me that I ate a lot more than 1,200 calories a day. Uh, but I did get through, I, I don't know how we all made it through that first week. We did and I lost five kilos in the first week and I thought, oh, okay. Now, I knew that was not going to continue. However, I thought, okay, this is something that I know that I, I can measure it. It's very, it's, it's very easily measurable and I thought, well, I don't have to do it forever. I can just, I, I just have to do it for a certain period of time and I'll get results and that'll get me started. Um, certainly I've learned a lot. Please don't take what I'm telling you now and saying, okay, this is the way to do it because I've learned so much on my journey and my journey started out as a weight loss journey. It turned into a weight release journey and now it's actually a health journey. But I had a lot of learning to get through to get to that point. So while that is what I what I did, and I'm very open about that, I'm also very um, passionate about telling people, please don't do that. Learn, <laughs> learn from my mistakes, uh, because I I feel that that's why I went through the journey that I went through, so that I can make it easier for other people. Because at the end of the day. Um, it's what we're trying to get to is health. And one of the biggest things that I learned is that if you're swapping unhealthy for something that you absolutely hate, and I, I will say I, I did not enjoy 1,200 calories a day at all, um, it's just as unhealthy. However, it did get me to a certain point. It gave me momentum. And uh, it was certainly, I learned a lot. I learned when you, are, when you are used to eating a lot of quantity of food, which I was, um, it wasn't necessarily so much that all of the food that I was eating was unhealthy. A lot of it was, was very healthy food. However, the quantities were definitely much more than what I should have been eating. So I learned a lot about um, calorie density in food. I learned a lot about um, making it was it was very easy to make healthier choices when you're sticking to 1,200 calories because if you make an unhealthy choice, you basically don't eat much in the day. <laughs> and I really needed. I was going from bulk quantity, so to be able to keep bulk quantity to still feel satiated I needed to be very careful about the choices I was making so I, I ended up eating a lot more fruit and vegetables than what than anything else basically for quite a period of time um, so yeah that's what got me started and then as I got some momentum I then started to add in I, I worked on the food first I was very clear with myself about working on one thing at a time so I worked on the food first and then when I felt like I had the food to a point where it just happened and I didn't have to worry about that anymore then I started to work on the exercise uh, and I'll be quite honest I still do not like the execution of exercise to this day however uh, I do do it most days because I know the benefits of it and um, I certainly couldn't imagine my life without exercise now. So at what point did you start helping other people? When did you realise you wanted to help other people and what's been the journey in that direction? Because you, you made a couple of mentions there about, you know, you went from being weight loss to being... Um, it's about weight release and then on to health. So what started all that journey and how has that changed? What 
what is it now? Well, I just realised uh, from my whole journey that, and, and I was one of those people that believed all the experts that it's, you just, it's just, it's all about what you're eating and you just need to move more. I believed all of that stuff. And, but as I went through my journey, I realised and I, and I started to, it's, it's, it really is true. They say when the student is willing, the teacher will appear. So I didn't even go looking for information. Information would just basically be shoved in my face at the appropriate time. When it was time for me, because <clears throat> as I said, I started working on one thing at a time. I was very careful about just doing one thing at a time. So I started on the food and then I started on the exercise. And then once I had those two parts basically just spinning away on their own, <clears throat> then I would start to have other information come into my, um, well, it's your RAS, your reticular activating system. So basically when you're not looking for anything, you don't see it. But when you start looking for things, it appears. So then I would have stuff articles or I'd um, see something on the internet, you know, be things to do with stress and sleep and and then I'd start reading up about that and I'd think, oh, okay, well, that's me. <laughs> How about we try and work on that next? So then I'd start working on my sleep and then I'd have more progress and and so and then even things like language, which is why I you, when I'm marketing, I use the term weight loss because that's what everybody's looking for. However, when I work with people, I use the term weight release because what happens when you lose something? You lose your keys. You want to go find them again. Well, language is really important and our brain is always listening. Our subconscious is always listening. So the, the language that we use is really, really important. And so when I'm talking about weight and working with people, we call it weight release or another way you can put it is donating kilos to the universe because we don't want it back. We want it gone. We want it gone forever, never to be seen again. And that's also why um, I say to people, don't go doing 1,200 calories because it's not sustainable. You can't do that forever. It, when you start playing the reducing calories game, you have to, for the rest of your life, just keep reducing calories, keep reducing calories until basically you're never going to be able to eat anything. Um, so it's very important to be thinking about, okay, when, when I now decide on a change, when I think, okay, well, this is another area of my health that I want to work on now. Um, I'm, I'm going to try this and I'll, I'll ask myself the question, okay, is this something that I can do for the rest of my life? If the answer is yes, then I'll ask myself the next question, okay, is this something that I will enjoy doing for the rest of my life? And if the answer to either of those two questions is no, then I don't make that change. I find something else or I find another way or, I, you know, I work on, on, on another aspect because, and that doesn't mean that that can't change in the future. So many of my beliefs have changed from when I first started out 10 years ago or 11 years ago now to now. So many of my beliefs have even been totally blown out of the water. So it doesn't mean that it's always going to be the case, but it's not the case for right now. And that's what we need to be aware of. What is going to help me right now with what's going on in my life right now to get to where I want to go? That's a fantastic point because, you know, if we're, all, if we're feeling all happy and everything's going crazy, we don't need as much support and structure as we do when things are going down the plug hole and, we, you know, we've got an awful lot more to cope with. But I also like the idea of the weight release thing. I think that's genius because, if yeah, you're quite right. If you think about losing something, then there's a loss, there's a grief, there's a sadness. But if you're releasing it, there's a freedom. That Like the psychology in, that, in just changing that one word is huge. Yeah, it's all about perspective and the way that we look at things. Even when it comes to 
you know, we have this inner dialogue. We all have this inner dialogue. And I know I've certainly, it's something that I even am still working on. But the mentality that, uh, you know, we might say to ourselves, okay, we can't eat that donut because if we eat that donut, we're going to put on weight. Whereas we could look at it from the other perspective. I'm choosing not to have that donut because if I have that donut, I, I've got this goal that I want to get to and um, and I'm working towards that goal. So I'm choosing not to have that donut. It's a totally different perspective and it gives you a totally different feel. It gives you your power back. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, if I look at a donut, and I do like donuts, <laughs> but I go, mm, I feel crap if I eat it. Like that's that's my thing, you know. I'll, I it just I won't feel right. So, yeah. whereas uh, people who are emotional eaters, <laughs> I know I've certainly been guilty of this. You know, you know that you're gonna feel crap when you eat it. But you know that in that li- that couple of seconds when you're eating it, you feel really good. <laughs> so, so you you are more likely to take the short term uh, pleasure over the long term feeling crap. Um, so it's about finding if if that is the way you are, th- there are tools and techniques that you can utilize that are going to help you get through that kind of stuff. It's just about. There's no one size fits all. Different things work for different people and it's about finding what works for you. So if somebody wants to work with you, how does that work? Yeah, that was that was a really I didn't phrase that very well. What what happens when somebody comes to you? You know, somebody came to you and they're like you were ten years ago, eleven years ago, you know, 180 kilos and been yo-yoing their weight their whole life. What happens then? What do you do? the very first thing we do is we have a conversation because they have to be at a certain point where they're ready and consciously they may think that they're ready subconsciously they still may not be so it definitely involves having conversation sometimes it'll be okay um you're not ready yet so I'll send them away with some stuff that they can work on. Uh, I might give them a copy of one of my books or sometimes both of my books, um, different things that I can give them to walk away from. I always, I don't like anybody leaving a call with me or a conversation with me not knowing that there's hope because there is there is there is hope sometimes people just need a little bit more work before they are ready to do the work that they need to do because there still is work and it's inner work and then sometimes they are ready and we work together um and we work together for varying periods of time it it depends on the person it depends on um how much work is needed and I can absolutely tell you, though, that if they are ready, it's, it's, they can get change overnight. However, when you're talking about weight release, you can get mental change at the click of the fingers, but that mental change is not going to translate to all the way that we met all the ways that we measure these things in the click of the fingers so you're not going to see the numbers go down on the scale uh you know for a period for at least a period of a week two three four weeks you're not going to see the centimeters go down you're not going to see the clothes get smaller so change is a process we can start the ball rolling and then we work together to keep because quite often one of the biggest things is because people don't see the change straight away, they can start to think, oh, it's not working. So that's why we need to work together longer term so that I help them get through that period until they can see the change translate to the scales and the centimetres and the way they're feeling in their body and the way they're feeling about themselves. So... It just depends on the person. It depends on how long they've been overweight for. It depends on if they're ready right now to 
to do the inner work and if they're ready to let go of those fears. Because if they are, it literally can happen just like that. So we're going to have to wrap up now. Thank you so much. How do people, so I'll put a link up um, on the webpage and on this video as well. I'll do little things on the bottom of the video. Um, What's the best way for people? Uh, Look, I really appreciate what you've said. For me, it's been a real eye opener because I've never had, I've had a bit of a problem with my weight, but never had a massive problem and and so I can't relate to it so it's a really fabulous eye-opener for me as one of those judgmental people apologies (laughs) we all are we all are to a certain point you know about different things yeah yeah but I love it because you know I'm really into the personal development stuff and working on yourself and constantly growing and it's great that it's you know that's it's not a physical thing don't go to weight watchers don't do you know don't do your 1200 calories like this is about what you think because the suit of armor putting your suit of armor on that makes so much sense to me it's like oh okay i got it i get why that's the way it is now and that's the thing. So many people, they're not even aware of what they're doing. But as soon as, you know, if somebody was listening to this and they heard that and they they might go, oh, my goodness, I never realised that's what I was doing, but that's exactly what I was doing. Well, then you've got awareness. Then, then you're... The subconscious is truly amazing and the reason why it does these things is because it's trying to protect us. It is like an overprotective parent. It is doing whatever it needs to do to keep us safe and to keep us alive. However, it doesn't always get it right how it does that. So when your subconscious doesn't uh, doesn't let you know what it is, that's because it's protecting you. But you watch something like this, you think, oh, my goodness. You get that awareness and then your subconscious goes, oh, wow, she didn't die. Maybe she's going to be okay. And then that really does get the ball rolling. That's when everything starts to unravel without you even consciously having to work on it. Your subconscious will start thinking, oh, she's actually going to be okay. Now I can start to slowly give her or him more information and they can start working on it. Um, So it can just be somebody watching something like this and that will get it started. And we, you can talk to Sherry in the Menopause, Marriage and Motherhood group, but you also have, you have a group as well that you can join, a free group? Yes, I've got, um, I've got a group called Fab Healthy Curves. Uh, but if anybody just wants to reach out to me on um, Facebook, I'm, I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all of those, but mostly people message me on Facebook. So if somebody just wants to reach out, um, then I can point them in what is going to be the right path for them when it comes to um, keeping up with me. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That was an absolute pleasure. I really enjoyed that. It was Thank so you. cool finding out about that. So, yeah. Thanks, Shari. Thank you, Karen. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for listening and I hope you're leaving with some thought-provoking information that can make a difference in your life. See you next time.